So MSI sent me an early sample of their brand new, massively upgraded 2026 ultrawide MPG 341 CQRX36 QD OLED monitor, which is a 3440 by 1440 360 hertz curved display, sporting a new Gen 5 QD OLED panel, which promises to deliver a better HDR experience with a higher 500 true black rating, up from 400 on older models, outrageously brighter highlights up to 1300 nits, better ambient light handling, improved scratch resistance, and most importantly, far greater clarity due to the new Samsung Display V-Stripe RGB panel in use, which should, in theory, finally eliminate distracting fringing on text. But, you know, does this monitor right here, does it actually deliver, or is this just not going to be enough to convince you to upgrade? Let's find out. Now, real quick, before we get into that, I wanna let you know that MSI did sponsor this video and my CES 2026 coverage, which certainly helps a ton with the traveling costs, though all my thoughts and opinions are my own. And I will have affiliate links once this monitor does become available in the description below, as well as in the pinned comments. But enough about that, let's take a look at this monitor and put each and every one of these upgrades to the test to see if it's actually that good. And let's start off with first, the HDR. Now HDR, don't get me wrong, it's certainly noticeably more bright than previous models. And especially if you're looking at darker content with bright highlights, I think it's gonna be possibly one of the most impressive HDR monitors of 2026. Although I haven't seen them all, so we'll see on that. As yeah, it does have some pretty wowing and popping colorful HDR imagery that can come off the screen. I mean, a 30% improvement from 1000 nits to 1300, that's pretty big, although the 10% window, unfortunately, is still under 600 nits, so that does actually limit it still to true black 500, and yes, that's an improvement over 400, but it's not up to the 1,000 nits that I'm hoping to see on a monitor at some point in the future, as there can be some content out there, in particular video or movie content, that might get blown out if the monitor can't get bright enough because, well, unfortunately, monitors don't have the same tone mapping abilities that TVs do. So is the brightness in HDR better? Yes. Is it certainly better than SDR? Absolutely. And I'll also tell you that, in general, I feel like the HDR is probably one of the better that I've seen on any monitor to date. But I hope it can be improved even further with future models. And I will also let you guys know that they did include an HDR curve editor this time, which is really awesome. And it's the first time I've seen this on any monitor period. And this allows you to actually individually adjust all the different window sizes to get the HDR picture to be exactly what you want. And in fact, you can even turn down the HDR brightness overall if you're a psychopath and you wanna have even dimmer HDR. But hey, it's out there as an option. I think a lot of people are really gonna love. Let's talk next about possibly the most important improvement, and that's the ambient light handling. Now, it's no secret that ambient light handling, it's been a bit of an issue on QD OLED. However, apparently this new coating should actually significantly improve it, and does it? And the answer is yes, but it's still not perfect. So when I compared this directly to a last generation QD OLED, it was certainly noticeably better. Now, some of the video I will be showing you, it's gonna be maybe not as impressive as it is in person as when the screen is off, it doesn't look massively improved, but if you actually sit in front of the monitor and try and use it versus an older QD OLED, you will find that the screen looks less hazy or washed out in a bright room, and also just the image in general looks higher contrast and is far more usable, making this, I think, actually finally a good option for a lot more buyers out there who are a little bit concerned about previous QD OLEDs, although they looked really excellent in a dark room, maybe having issues in a bright room. I think this is gonna convince a lot of people to finally take the move over to QD OLED, but it is still behind W OLED, at least based on my testing. So as you can see here, we've moved from around 0.18 nits as the lowest number I was able to get on older QD OLED panels roughly to now around 0.11 nits. And that is a huge improvement, but it's still a far cry from the lower 0.07 nits that you can see on last generation MLA W OLEDs and even 0.04 on the newer generation four layer W OLED. So W OLED, although it might fall short of QD OLED in some other aspects, it still does hold the lead when it comes to ambient light handling, but this does shorten the gap significantly. And I think it's gonna be much appreciated 
by QD OLED buyers. And now let's talk about what I think is probably the second most important upgrade, and that's to the text clarity. Now, MSI is using a brand new Samsung display panel, which allows for an RGB stripe type of design. Now it's somewhat of a sideways V shape as the sub pixels get smaller as they move from left to right. And this is due, I believe, to the blue light coming through. So the blue sub pixel doesn't need to be as large to put out as much light as the other sub pixels. And that's, I believe, why you're seeing what you see here in my microscope video here. Now, I will tell you guys that when compared to an older QD OLED, I did side by side them several times and I found that the new RGB stripe design, while it's not 100% perfect, it is a massive improvement over the older triangular design and it leads to far more clear text. And I think some of those people out there, I didn't hear too much of this, but I did hear a few times of people complaining about getting headaches looking at older generation QD OLED panels. You might wanna give QD OLED a second chance because I don't think Think anyone's going to be having any eye strain or headaches anymore with QD OLED as the fringing has been so massively reduced that I don't think it's going to be a problem for pretty much anyone. But there was also a couple other upgrades that I didn't see MSI talking about that I found myself. One of which being the ease of cleaning the panel. I found that, and I'll have a whole video on this in the future to dive deeper into it, but cleaning these panels is far easier, or at least it was far easier on my unit. And that's gonna be just an absolute godsend for those of you out there looking to pick up a panel and use it for a really long time. I also did test the scratch resistance. Hopefully MSI isn't mad. Um, it can be scratched still. However, the scratch resistance does appear to be a lot better on this, and I do think there will be a lot fewer you know, monitors reaching people's homes with damage already in shipping. I don't think you're gonna have that problem anymore, and I don't think you're really gonna accidentally be scratching your panel anymore, which is great to see, although hopefully at some point this can be improved even further, like maybe Gorilla Glass or something on a high-end model so that you really can't scratch it. But that was an awesome upgrade as well that I didn't really see too much talk about. And yeah, it's pretty great. And also on previous monitors, MSI was trying to roll out their AI sensor and their, you know, their AI care features and crosshairs, etc. And, you know, I'll be honest, wasn't super impressed in the past, but now, woo, a wooga. It's actually, it's actually pretty dang good. So the AI crosshair was really cool because it changes colors against the background that you're looking at to be more visible. So if you're playing a game and you turn your HUD off or something, you can still get a crosshair, which I actually might make a lot of use out of. And I think I might actually buy one of these monitors, especially if I can get a 4K monitor. I, man, that could actually come in really handy when I'm trying to record B-roll to show on monitors. I'm turning my HUD off. That'll be awesome. And also the AI sensor, when you walk away, it actually works pretty much flawlessly now. So you don't have to worry about turning your monitor off or any burn in, anything like that, because walk away, a few seconds, boom, turns off, approach the monitor and it'll turn on. And you can even adjust it to just do all kinds of various different things to suit your needs. So overall, does this monitor deliver on its promises? And I will say pretty much, yeah. I mean, the HDR is certainly better, at least in those dark HDR scenes. The coding is way better. I mean, you're getting better ambient light handling. You're getting better scratch resistance, or at least I found better scratch resistance on my model, as well as better cleaning experience for long-term use. And really importantly, you're also getting far better text clarity, which I can't wait to see on a 4K version, hopefully at some point in the future. But even at 1440p, still really awesome. However, it's not perfect. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think it's gonna be a tough battle between this RGWB and RGB OLED that are all gonna be coming out in 2026. They all have their pros and cons. It's just that the issues that QD OLED was facing, well, they've been significantly reduced. I just hope that HDR continues to improve and one day we do get a thousand nits in a 10% window to really wow us on these monitors. But regardless, I was really impressed with this monitor and all the improvements it brings to the table, but make sure you get subscribed for all my other CES coverage, cause there's a lot of really, really exciting stuff coming out. And also you probably won't wanna miss my full review with all the Calman testing and tons and tons of more data on this monitor because there's a lot of data. And I'll give you a little secret, it does pretty well in a lot of these tests.